pack of Avalon cigarettes, please. Yes, sir. Oh, just a moment, sir. Don't forget your change. You never guess, but Avalon's cost you less. So why not always Avalon with Avalon? Good evening, friends. Good evening. This is Del King saying welcome to Avalon time with greetings from Red Foley and the entire company. But first tonight, we want you to meet a man who's Fit as a fiddle, bow legs and everything, Red Skelton. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I feel great tonight. I just got back to New York City where I finished my third picture for Warner Brothers. Funny thing, every picture I make, they make me play the part of a simp. That's the trouble with being a type. Yeah. Hello there, microphone. Well, Skelton, it's about time you spoke to me. Well, I'm sorry, Mike. Gee, really, I don't know what to say. Say something funny for a change. <laughs> Listen, I don't say it. I have to say funny things to make people laugh. No, not with a face like yours. <laughs> Listen, I'm the best-looking one in my family. You can imagine what the rest of them look like. I got one brother that's so ugly, he's got a job standing in front of a drugstore to make people sick. <laughs> I don't know why I'm telling you about my family microphone. I came out to tell the folks about my trip to New York. I really had a lot of fun, too. I took a ride on the subway. You know what a subway is? <laughs> it's a sardine can on wheels. <laughs> but the one I was on wasn't so crowded. I had a strap all to myself. <laughs> there was a lady got on, and I got up to give her my seat. And just as I got up, I said, would you have my seat? She fainted. <laughs> when she came to, she thanked me, and I fainted. <laughs> Then went over to Radio City, over to the RCA building, over at Radio City to see that big building there. And what elevators? They've got elevators that take you 60 stories in three seconds. <laughs> sure does Rockefeller Center. <laughs> went over to Fifth Avenue and saw the latest spring styles. Oh, boy, are the dresses short this year. <laughs> dresses this year are like a barbed wire fence. They protect the property, but they don't obstruct the view. <laughs> I went down to the railroad station. I walked up to the information desk, and I said, have you got a fast train out of here for Cincinnati? He says, no, but we got a fast train out of here for Washington, D.C. I said, who wants to go to Washington? He says, Thomas Dewey. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Play it, Phil. Could be. <laughs> spring trial. Uh, um, oh, uh, hello, Skelton. Hiya, Peter Grant. What this fall off, isn't it, huh? It's spring, Red. Beautiful <gasps> spring. Uh, <laughs> I get it. Go ahead and spring it. Yes, Red. <laughs> In the spring, a young man's fancy lightly turns the thoughts of... Avalon cigarette. Very good, Red. Mm. I see you, too, feel the call of spring. Feel that tremendous urge to... 
Travel on. With their full lungs. Uh-huh. Let him laugh, let him laugh, let him laugh. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth, Well, Red. if I know you, Peter, you'll put some more right back in again. Right you are, Red. Avalons are extra smooth, delightfully mild, thoroughly enjoyable. Okay, okay, little girl. I'll buy your flowers. I mean, <laughs> give me a pack of Avalons, please. Yes, sir. Just a moment, Mr. Skelton. Don't forget your change. You never guessed, but Avalons cost you less. Yes, Three to five cents less than other popular priced brands. Keep punching there, Peter. That's why millions are changing to Avalon's, the outstanding cigarette value on the market today. Well, be seeing you, Ed. Uh, <laughs> I know, a little later on in the program. <laughs> oh, the flowers that bloom in the spring. <laughs> <laughs> well, old Peter Grant, an old fall guy with spring in his heart, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, friends, that's the yodel theme that usually introduces the singing star of Avalon time, Red Foley. But we're sorry to say that Red's not with us tonight. He's on the sick list, but we expect him back with us next week. And tonight, Kurt Massey not only takes Red's place, but sings the very songs originally scheduled. Kurt, a mighty fine audience, would like to hear you sing Old Folks. knows him as old folks Like the seasons he'll come and he'll go Just as free as a bird and as good as his word That's why everybody loves him so Always leaving his spoon in his coffee Puts his napkin up under his chin and that yellow cob pipe, it's so mellow it like You needn't be ashamed of him In the evening after supper What stories he would tell How he held a speech at Gettysburg for Lincoln that day I know that one so well don't quite understand about old folks. Did he fight for the blue or the red? For he's so diplomatic and so democratic. We always let him have his Hello, this is the Skelton Mail Escort Service. If a man answers, we hang up. You want a fourth for bridge? I know just the dummy. I'll send Mr. Skelton right over. Listen, I may be dumb, but I don't chase water wagons three blocks to tell the man his wagon was leaking. <laughs> oh, Miss Stillwell, how did the mail escort uh, market open today? Tall, dark, and handsome, preferred. What's common? Short, slow, and sloppy. Yeah. How about that? Me running a one-man mail escort service all by myself. And to think my friends used to call me stinky. <laughs> oh, what's on the books for tonight? Let's see. I have calls from five different ladies. Five? I don't think we can handle it. Well, hire more escorts. You can't run a mail escort service and take all the dates yourself. Oh, no? Well, you don't hear any of the women complaining, do you? Or do you? <laughs> I'll take this. Hello, this is the wrong number. <clears throat> Hiya, folks, is. Hiya, Dale. What happened there? <laughs> oh, the mustache is here again. Uh-uh. Say, uh, what's this mail escort service business? Sounds kind of tricky. No, it's not. Women call up and usually want a date in a hurry, and we usually send me. <laughs> well, uh, Red, uh, you might put me down on the list. I don't know. I'm kind of afraid of that mustache, Dale. Oh, now, wait a minute. I don't see why. There's something romantic about a mustache. Yeah. Just think of the good old days when America was fuller brush men. Hello, Corn. What do you hear from the cop? 
Nothing. <laughs> Nothing, but I'm all ears. Uh... <laughs> oh, shucks. <laughs> That ain't in here, either. <laughs> oh, you better not let that mustache grow too long. My grandfather had a mustache that was so long, one day he was twirling it, and someone yelled contract, and he took off. <laughs> okay, but listen, it's indecent for men to go around with their upper lips in the nude. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll see you later, Red. Okay, Del. You know, Del King's good looking. Maybe we should give his mustache a try. I don't know. A mustache is pretty ticklish business. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Skelton. Oh, hello. <laughs> How are you, Hercules? There's nothing today, Hercules. Call around later. <laughs> well, my goodness, did I do something wrong the last time out? <laughs> If anybody's got any complaining to do, it's me. That girl just danced me to smithereens. <laughs> Why, when I got home, I was so tired, I had to wash the dishes in bed. Oh, aren't you the one? <laughs> well, if there's no dates, I'll be seeing you. I feel just like my hat McGandy. Just another day wasted away. <laughs> Oh, great fellow, that Hercules. <laughs> Hiya, Skelton. Well, Phil Davis. Hiya, men. Hey. <laughs> Hiya, Phil. Hello, Miss Stillwell. Phil, have a deploy meets girl. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Skelton, I'd prefer it if you would refer to me as a stylish stout. <laughs> anyway, I'm starting to reduce. Oh. You are, Phil? Yeah. And believe me, it's time to reduce when a fellow's girl says... The three's a crowd. <laughs> Say, Phil, would you like me to put your name down on the date list? Boy, I sure would. Hey, maybe we got something here, a one-man double date. <laughs> Say, can you dance? Why, yeah, I can rumble. I mean, rumba. Rumba. <laughs> I bet you're a whiz at the tangle, too. <laughs> well, uh, I'll keep you in mind, Phil. Okay, skinny pants. Yeah. <laughs> Phil's nice, isn't he? Yeah, he's a swell fellow. A good musician, too. Did you hear his new song, I Surround You, Dear? <laughs> Hello? This is a skeleton male escort service. What? You want something well-groomed in tails. Do you want red skeleton or a horse? <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's a good one. What'd you say? A horse. A horse. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> Maybe you're right, Miss Stillwell. Maybe we should get some other men. What kind do you prefer? The conceited or the other kind? What other kind? <laughs> Mr. Skelton, I believe. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> Careful with that dirty laugh, fellow. We have a mixed crowd here. I'm uh, out to have some fun. I am ex Admiral Burlap. Ex Admiral Burlap? Yes. Yes. What they do? Sack you? Yes. <laughs> Are you really an admiral? Yes, indeed. Here's a picture of me in action. But you're standing in back of everybody. Yeah, he's probably a rear admiral. <laughs> Oh, look at that funny looking the hat you're wearing. Oh, right, yes. But look at those medals on my chest. Yeah, what'd you get those medals for? For wearing that hat. <laughs> <laughs> I got most of those medals for helping Dewey take Manila. Yeah, what'd you do when Dewey took Manila? I took strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, <clears throat> I'd like for you to supply me with an escort. Huh? Some uh, a killer a dealer who can put me hip. Quick, the flit. We got a jitterbug in here. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, your secretary. <laughs> She's a cute little number. Yeah. You, uh, you think you could like a guy like me? Sure, if he wasn't too much like you. Uh, <laughs> very good. But uh, now, I'd like for you to take me where the younger crowd hangs out. I'm looking for my son. Oh, you are? Yes. 25 years ago, when I joined up, my wife ran away with my little son. Since that time, I've saved a half million dollars for the little fellow, uh -huh. and I must find him. A half a million dollars? Yes. Say, did this happen in Brooklyn? Yes. 
Was the kid light complected? Yes. Brown eyes? Yes. Pearly white teeth? Yes. Red hair? Yes. Father! <laughs> Jeanette is here to echo love's latest declaration. When it's spring, heaven can wait. Heaven can wait. This is paradise. Just being here with you. And breathing the air you do. Heaven can wait. Darling, it's true. Paradise, gazing at all your charms, it's heavenly in your arms, heaven can wait. You must be an angel on a visit from the sky. Now I look at heaven when I look into your eyes. Heaven can wait, this is paradise, loving the way we do, until I go there with you, heaven can wait. Want some seafood, Mama? Yes, boys and girls, it's hold tight. By the way, friends, Hold Tight was introduced on Avalon Time by the Andrews Sisters. All right, Peter Grant, 
Ladies and gentlemen, I've been telling you for many weeks now that Avalon cigarettes are the outstanding cigarette value on the market. Yes, I've been saying it, and millions of you people have been proving it for me every day by your repeated purchases. Millions of smokers buy Avalons in preference to all other brands because they've found Avalons give them more for their money. Why don't you switch to Avalons and get more for your money? Get finest quality cigarettes for three to five cents less than other popular priced brands. You positively have everything to gain, make no mistake about that, because Avalons are highest quality. In fact, you could want no finer quality cigarettes, regardless of price, regardless of brand. They're 100% union made from the very finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos obtainable and give you a thoroughly enjoyable, smooth, mild smoke. That's why you'd never guess they cost you less. What more could you possibly demand in a cigarette? Superior quality tobaccos, a super fine blend at a real saving. The next time, ask for Avalon and save the difference. Say, Mr. Skelton. Why, it's warm in here tonight. A lot of humility, isn't it? <laughs> Mr. Skelton. Yes? Would you take me to the family theater tonight to see that picture, Marco Polo? Nah, I don't want to see that picture. They make a picture of one of my ancestors and they won't even give me a part in it. Now, don't tell me that Marco Polo Marco was... Marco Polo Skelton was one of my ancestors. Mm-hmm, that's right. How come you know so much about Skelton's ancestors? Uh, Red gives me five bucks to agree with him. <laughs> so, again, I'll set the scene so Red can tell the story. Okay, Del. Okay, Red. Okay, get that music. year 1278, during the dynasty of the great Kublai Khan, the place outside the walls of the city of Shantou, China. As the scene opens, we find Marco Polo Skelton, the adventurer, and his secretary approaching the palace of Kublai Khan. Marco Polo, I'm so tired. Can't I rest for a few minutes? No, only three more miles, then it's my turn to carry you. <laughs> well, I'm not going to carry you any farther. Hey, what's the idea of dropping me? I didn't drop you. I threw you. Yeah. It was strictly occidental. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Well, you're fired. You go back to Venice. Oh, no. You can't fire me. Your huh? father sent me along to see that you don't fall in love with one of those pretty little Chinese girls. Oh, yeah? Well, can I help it if the girls vamp me? Yeah? Well, I've heard you give them the old oil, too. Yeah. So what? A little oil for the vamps of China. <laughs> How about the one you were so crazy about last week? You mean little Yum Yum? Oh, I gave her up. Are you sure? Yep, I left her sitting on her uh, pagoda. <laughs> well, here's Kublai Khan's palace. Beep! <clears throat> Ring that doorbell. Beep! Gee, I hope they're home. Beep! What's this peep business? Oh, it's something I had for lunch. Beep! <laughs> well, what was it? I had some bird nest soup and forgot to take the birds out. Beep! <laughs> Ah, greetings to the great Kublai Khan. Marco Polo Skelton, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> and Miss Stillwell. Well, well, well. My dear, you look like an old flower. Yeah? You look a little wilted yourself. <laughs> Say, how was that last shipment of goods I sent, Khan? Everything satisfactory? Yes, yes, yes. The shipment was all right, except for those 12 colorblind Venetians. Oh, well, that was a slight error in the stock room. That was supposed to be 12 colored Venetian blinds. <laughs> no wonder they objected when I hung them at the windows. <laughs> hey, who threw that hatchet? <laughs> Dan Green setting it. I did. Did you like my little joke? Yes, it was very funny. You threw that hatchet, I thought I'd split. <laughs> well, I'll leave you folks with my honorable executioner, Achmat. I must tell my favorite sons that you're here. Which are your favorite sons, Khan? Awu, Abu, Aslu, Agu, and uh, Afwe. <laughs> well, hurry up back, Khan. Say, Stillwell, I'd like to marry you and make you the favorite wife in my harem. Do you have a, a harem like Kublai Khan? Oh, dear, no. Khan has 200 wives. 
I only have 75. Oh, you're practically a bachelor. <laughs> Say, Polo Skelton, you make me sick. Well, you don't give me an appetite. Look me straight in the eye and say that. I can't look you straight in the eye. Why not? You got slants in your gland. <laughs> I'd like to take you over to my torture chamber and spring one of those trap doors to the lion's den. Oh, you would, huh? I'd do it, too, if you weren't such a friend of the great Khan. Yeah? But remember what Confucius said. Why? Someday the worm will turn. So what? He looks the both the same on both ends. <laughs> Who's this Confucius? He's the honorable one who gave us proverbs. Here's one of his books. Say, I'd like to read that sometime. You would? Yeah. Well, step over into my torture chamber. The light's much better there. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't think I ought to read it today. Oh, I... come on. No, come on. No, no, no. Why not? Uh, come on. I'll keep my trap shut. <laughs> All right, but I don't know. I don't think I should be going in here to read this book. Oh, <laughs> the trap door. <laughs> there he goes. And good riddance to him. Why, well, that's the strangest sight I've ever seen. The lions are standing on both sides of him while he reads the book. Are you all right, Marco Polo Skelton? Yeah, I'm okay. As long as I got these books, these animals won't bother me. <laughs> I'm reading between the lines. <laughs> When the composer is Billy Hill, when the singers are Kurt Massey and the Avalon Chorus, the result is a musical treat. It's the Chapel in the Moonlight. There's a little old church that's covered with moss Where I held your hand tenderly I often go there to gaze at the cross and dream that you'll come back to me. How I'd love to hear the organ in the chapel in the moonlight while we're strolling down the aisle. I'd love to hear you whisper in the chapel in the moonlight. Let the love of light in your eyes forever will shine. Hear the roses turn to ashes. Hear the In the chapel in the moonlight As they sing, oh, promise me friends when you ask for Avalon cigarettes. Don't forget your change. Yes, Avalon cigarettes, dear friends, cost several cents less than others. You too can save this difference like all of us Avalon brothers. Each pack is wrapped in cellophane, each pack is union made. No wonder folks from coast to coast say Avalon's lead the parade. So why not always travel on with us? Yes, you'd never guess, but Avalon's cost only 10 cents plus city or state tax. 
program, and I hope that my little quibs have brought, brought a grin to your face. And if you'd like to bring a smile to your face this week, try an Avalon. This is Red Skelton saying good night for Red Foley. Be with us next Saturday evening at the same time when the Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation will again present Avalon Time. Del King speaking. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Avalon Time originated in the studios of the nation station and has reached you through the National Broadcasting Company.